But the point is, I wonder to myself, can I be like that again? I would love to be like that again. And the answer is, yes, I can. (laughs) And so can you. The problem is getting there and actually staying there. We've taught ourselves to react the way that we react to certain things. And we almost then have to unlearn all of that so that we can learn how to surrender again and let go and just allow what's going to happen to happen and remember that we are in charge of how we react to it and how we feel about it. Because when we say things like you are in control of your destiny, you are in control of what happens to you, that's the sense that it's meant in is that you create your perspective, basically. You create the way that you see things. You decide how you react to things. You decide what things mean to you. And by that, you are creating who you are and you are creating your experience. This is the Energy Within Podcast, helping you to embrace your weirdness, find the confidence to be your true self, and step into your soul's purpose. My name is Carrie Jokala. I am your host. I am a Reiki master teacher, a fitness instructor, a wife, a mom to two little boys, and this is episode 144. Somehow I feel like that number is more significant. (laughs) But I don't know why. It's just a feeling. Well, I have a thought, but it's not. I don't know. We'll move on. So anyway, thank you for being here. (laughs) Before I dive in, I want to remind you, if you haven't yet, to make sure you come on over to the new Instagram account that I created. I am Carrie Jokala. And the other one, which is just Carrie underscore Jokala, it's still there. I don't really have any plans to delete it right now, but... Just FYI, make sure you come on over to the new one because that's where I'm posting all of the new reels. And I just want to say that I'm grateful (laughs) that so far the reels I've been posting are doing significantly better (laughs) than the ones on my other account, which is just evidence to me that the other one was dead. And I hope you're enjoying the new ones that I'm putting out there. If you are, please make sure to actually remember to like them. I do that sometimes, especially if I end up saving a reel, maybe because I want to use the audio, but I do actually like the reel. I save it, but then I forget to go back and like it. So anything you can do to engage with it, maybe share it, that just helps the algorithm. So if you feel called to do so, please make sure you take that action and help boost the algorithm. So I did pull a couple of cards, and normally I tell you what they are in the beginning, but I'm going to wait this time because I'm going to use them as a way to tie it all together at the end because I'm not really sure exactly how to weave my thoughts together today. I know my main point, (laughs) and we'll just kind of see where it goes from there. So I had a thought that I wanted to use for a podcast, and... Then the message surrounding it just keeps coming up. And it's all about this idea of surrender, of letting go. If you guys remember Logan Oriuela, who was on the podcast, she is, as I'm recording this, in the middle of running a three-day experience called Surrendered, which I'm actually behind on. (laughs) But I've also started reading a book called The Surrender Experiment that I bought months ago and I've had just sitting around and just hadn't gotten to it and I finally started it. I'm only like 60 pages in, but it's so interesting and so cool. The things that have been happening to the author as he's recounting his story and literally not to spoil too much, but that message also came up in the cards that I pulled and I pulled from three different decks. (laughs) I wanted one from each. We got two from one of the decks because they jumped out together and it felt like they were both meant to be part of the message and they definitely are. So it's a really tricky thing to really truly surrender and let go every day. I struggle with it still myself (laughs) because especially when things happen that make us upset, make us sad, 
Maybe we get hit with something out of left field. Something just doesn't make sense. It's hard not to react. And no, let me clarify before we go any further. I am not talking about anything specific. We don't do that here. (laughs) I am 100% talking about just your normal daily life happenings, occurrences, just going day by day, especially if things get flipped, something happens that we didn't expect, or maybe we did expect something, but it was still upsetting, we're angry, we're annoyed, we're frustrated, we're overwhelmed, we're stressed, and we sit in this energy of defeat and thinking things like, oh my God, I can't believe this happened. Why did this have to happen? That kind of attitude. And now while I am, of course, if you've been here, you know, I'm not saying it's wrong to experience those feelings. It's not wrong to get upset or angry. You never want to pretend that you're not feeling something that you're feeling. You want to work through it. Let yourself feel it. But you do want to make sure you move through it. You don't just stay there. But this thought that I had last week was kind of a memory. And it was just about how I specifically remember like being aware of this thought. It's kind of weird. And I don't remember exactly how old I was. Let's say eight. I don't really know (laughs) because I don't remember a specific incident. I just remember the specific thought. So whatever was going on that day, I don't know, maybe I ended up in the ER for (laughs) an asthma attack or something. Let's say it was something like that. So something pretty major. (laughs) It's not like it was a weekly or even a monthly occurrence for me, but it still happened pretty often when I was younger. And whether this was the exact moment or not, I do just remember thinking, observing really, how kind of go with the flow (laughs) I had always been. And I was that way when I was a kid for a long time. I'd say I stopped going with the flow that much once I became an adult. (laughs) But I just remember observing that I wasn't thrown off by anything that happened during the day, no matter how major it was. There was no disbelief. There was no sense of defeat. It was just like, okay, this happened. This is how my day went. This is just what happened today. Regardless of the fact that I wasn't expecting this, that's what happened. And here we are. And I don't really know how else to describe it. (laughs) Then it was just this sense of like, okay, Kind of like when my son Teddy was born (laughs) and through that whole experience, he comes out, he doesn't cry and he's just kind of like, oh, okay, I'm here. Hi, mom. Hi, dad. (laughs) Oh, milk. Yeah, sure. I could eat. You know, he was just so (laughs) easygoing and so chill about the whole thing, even though, you know, metaphorically speaking, we had almost really both been in, you know, the equivalent of a car accident. <laughs> and I say that because there is a meme about being sent home from the hospital after labor where you've been in a car accident, you're severely injured, <laughs> and instead of being sent home to heal, you are handed another small human who has also been in a car accident and you must now take care of them. <laughs> so that's why I say that. But That thought randomly popped into my head last week about how that was the way I used to approach my days. It was just like things went how they went. And I don't know if I was that aware of the reaction part of it and how it was up to me how I reacted. I don't know if I was aware of that part of it, but I was aware of noticing, (laughs) if that makes any sense. I was aware of noticing that... I just went with it and things were okay. Like even if they were not okay, like I was okay. I knew things were going to be okay one way or another. And one other little interjection, again, reminding you, I'm just talking about regular average daily occurrences and perhaps things that are a little elevated beyond that, not anything super major, you know, like saying you've lost a loved one or something like that. We're not talking about coming at, those types of things with a go with the flow attitude. There are so many more factors and emotions and things that go into something like that. So 
let's just stay focused on just being like what we would characterize as a normal daily event, but still something that could kind of throw us off, make us upset, annoy us, frustrate us. But the point is, I wonder to myself, can I be like that again? I would love to be like that again. And the answer is, yes, I can. (laughs) And so can you. The problem is getting there and actually staying there. We've taught ourselves to react the way that we react to certain things. And we almost then have to unlearn all of that so that we can learn how to surrender again and let go and just allow what's going to happen to happen and remember that we are in charge of how we react to it and how we feel about it. Because when we say things like you are in control of your destiny, you are in control of what happens to you, that's the sense that it's meant in is that you create your perspective, basically. You create the way that you see things. You decide how you react to things. You decide what things mean to you. And by that, you are creating who you are and you are creating your experience. You may not be in control of the actual things that are happening outside of you that you feel maybe are happening to you or things that happen to other people, but you get to decide what they mean for you and you get to decide how you react to them and what you do in response to them. That's where you're in control of your destiny and the things that happen to you in that way. So rather than sitting there wondering why or being frustrated, we look at what we want to do with this new information (laughs) that we have. Maybe a change in our perspective. And also, again, one other interjection. I'm not perfect at this (laughs) by any means. That's why I'm sitting here wondering and having these thoughts of can I get back to that go with the flow that I used to have of not being thrown so off guard by things. And I know that we can get there if that's where we want to be. But just like anything else, it's going to take practice. So here are the cards that I pulled. So I pulled from the Work Your Light deck because that one seems to always call to me. I also pulled from the Star Temple Oracle. And we got two cards from the Star Seed Oracle which I actually haven't pulled from in a very, very long time. (laughs) So, hmm, are you ready for the first one from the Work Your Light deck? It's the mirror card. Who or what is triggering you? So if something throws you off guard, look in the mirror. Why did it throw you off guard? What is it triggering in you? So I'm going to read this to you. The filter of our own experience is how we experience life 90% of the time. Through our own projections, when someone reminds us of an unhealed experience, we get triggered. Often it's an unconscious thing. People and situations can trigger our mirrors to reflect back to us what we believe to be true about life, the universe, and ourselves. Mirrors pointing to our shadow and our light. Mirrors revealing the parts of us that are yet to be accepted, witnessed, or loved. This card is guiding you to look closely at what experiences or people are currently triggering in you and what they could be mirroring back to you. When have you felt like this before? Could they be opportunities to heal something in you? Or are they shining a light on something that longs to be witnessed in you? This goes for the good and the bad. The good, those who we admire and put on a pedestal. If we do not realize that we are attracted to them because we are like them, we will need to cut them down in order to rise to their level. The bad, those we despise, are envious of and put down. If we do not realize that they trigger something in us, then it is still yet to be healed, and we will remain hurt and wounded ourselves. So I think that's a strong one (laughs) right there, just by itself. That might be the only card you need, but we're going to go in further. So from the Star Temple Oracle, we got the visionary, awake. With an intuitive perspective, I see the bigger picture. So... When something does upset you, when something does throw you off, when something makes you angry or scared or worried or frustrated, can you take a moment, besides looking in the mirror, to really take a big step back and also look at the big picture? Look at what else could be going into this, whether it's from inside you or factors outside of you. What's influencing this? What's making it look the way it looks to you? from all angles. What other questions can you ask? What else might be going on? 
what might the other perspective be? And then the star seed oracle, we got the first card is star brothers, Horus energy, protection, loyalty, safety, and trust. You're more protective than you can imagine. It's safe to open the back of your heart. You're being called to be open to receiving a new level of support now from those in your life and from the benevolent beings you're connected with. Through ancestral patterning, current life traumas, and past life karmic impressions, many of us have become mistrustful and suspicious of loyalty, and we have blocks when it comes to receiving support. We've learned that we need to go at life alone, that it's not safe to let our guard down and our heart open, that the world isn't a friendly place. The Star Brothers want you to have a new experience of life on Earth. They want you to feel deeply secure and safe, even if you're going through a difficult time. They want you to hand over your fears to them, to see them as opportunities to let in more love. They're guiding you to stay open to receiving a greater level of support than you can ever imagine, both in this world and beyond. To call in your team of loyal protectors and supporters, both physically and energetically. They want you to learn to soften through life's ups and downs, and to learn to open your heart, especially when it most wants to harden. So there you go, just more fuel for that message of surrendering to life's flow and to trust, to know, to always remember, especially when you don't feel it, to take a moment, take that step back, look at the bigger picture and understand that even when you don't feel it, you are so divinely supported always. Like I could cry thinking about that, remembering that, that no matter what, you are always supported. You are always safe. It's when you put up the walls, you let things throw you off. You stop remembering who you really are and that you have control over who you really are, who you want to be. When you sit too long in that disconnect, that's why we feel unsafe because we're not remembering and feeling into the support that is so close to us, always right there for us whenever we need it. And finally, from that same deck, we got Whale and Orca Elders, Share Your Song, Frequency of Sound, Diving Deep. So (laughs) here it literally says right here, if you pull this card, you're being called to surrender (laughs) to your deepest truth and share it with potency, to bow to who you truly are. What did I just say? (laughs) It's not like I didn't look at this before, but I was speaking just on my own. (laughs) I don't remember every little detail from (laughs) the book explanations from when I read them before I started recording the podcast. So I didn't remember that it said that part of it. But yeah, to bow to who you truly are, to stretch your heart wide enough to hold it all, to leave your fears, doubts, and baggage at the door, to question any part of you that doesn't feel good enough. The whale and orca elders want you to give others the privilege of seeing who you truly are and for you to see the same in other beings, to drop your hangups and personality flaws and get busy revealing the unique note your soul came here to sing. Peel back the layers of suffering and pain and reveal to others your soul's true song and endeavor to see the soul of all those you meet. We are all connected. We are all one. And it is because we are literal pieces of God. That is how we are all connected. So if we can step back and see that bigger picture, does that change things? I don't know. I hope so. In so many different situations, I think if we can step back and see the bigger picture instead of letting ourselves get stuck and frustrated, hung up on all the little details, little things, focus on what really is important for our lives in the grand scheme of things, I know that that would help us all calm down. (laughs) Take things one step at a time. Be in the present. Be in the now. Because being present instead of focusing on things that haven't even happened yet, which is called anxiety, (laughs) staying in the present is what brings the opportunities for peace and calmness and true happiness and the ability to do the things that we really want to do. It's one thing to design your future, to work on aligning with it, to set your intentions, to set your goals, but then you've got to, excuse the phrase, set it and forget it, (laughs) 
come back to the present and do the things that need to be done or the things that you want to do. So to wrap it up, yes, we're human. We're still always going to have things that throw us off. There's always going to be something that's there that we can get upset about, that we will get upset about, that'll make us sad, that will make us feel stressed. But if we can remember to take a step back, look in the mirror to find out what's triggering us, step back to see the bigger picture, remember that we are always divinely supported, then we can feel safe to be who we are and flow. Just like these whales and orcas through the water. (laughs) See what I did there? You like that? You like how I wrapped that up? I like that. I thought that was pretty good. (laughs) So I hope that was helpful. I hope that you'll also look further into this idea of surrender and what that means to you, how that would positively impact your life. If you need some help to shift yourself towards that energy, to clear out some things, to get the energy moving again, please come and do a Reiki session with me. They are all on Zoom, so it does not matter where in the world you are as long as we can line up (laughs) with time zones. (laughs) So you'll find the link for that in the show notes. There's also, of course... Akashic Records sessions available, which you'll find on the website as well. And if you would like your own personalized card reading, you'll find those options on the website. All of those links will be in the show notes. Stay tuned for very, very soon the launch of my first Reiki One and Confidence course. I have yet to come up with a snappy name for it. (laughs) Make sure that you follow me on the new Instagram And please, if you did enjoy this episode, make sure that you share it. Tag me when you do. Make sure you tag the new account, I am Carrie Jokala. And finally, if you feel so called, leave a review, especially on Apple Podcasts. Reviews and ratings, positive ones, (laughs) help to boost the visibility of the podcast as well. And the podcast continues to grow. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being here for this episode and I will see you next time. 